Depression is a difficult topic to understand and I don't think you can ever really fully understand how it can affect you until you or someone you know has experienced it. I was always seen as this happy lad who enjoyed playing sports, making YouTube videos, socialising with my friends, but recently I've experienced just how much it can impact your life. I guess the sole aim of this video is to share my story, to raise awareness, to make sure no one else ends up in the same situation as me and just to tell you that you're not alone if you're dealing with depression. What's going on guys? So this is a bit of a different video to what I usually make. I'd been debating for a while whether to actually post my story but my friend is actually making really good movements with um, raising awareness for mental health uh, and he released his story and it got a, a, a really good response um, and it turns out it's helped quite a lot of people to actually go forward and tell people um, about whether they're dealing with depression. And I guess that's kind of the main aim with this video is just to tell you that um, if you're dealing with depression that you're not going through it alone. There's loads of other people out there that are actually dealing with exactly the same thing. Um, and for me the hardest part was actually making the first step and trying to seek help. But once you've done that, you're already on the road to helping yourself get better. The scary reality of everything is that if I didn't have such amazing support throughout all of this, off my friends, off my family, then I wouldn't be here today. And I know that there's a lot of people out there who are dealing with this stuff and are dealing with it by himself and you just need to remember that you're not alone. The hardest part sometimes is reaching out and getting that first bit of help. So in terms of depression and anxiety, I, I kind of experienced brief stints through school but nothing major and then came um, when I dislocated my shoulder. Um, I was always a very big kind of like um, sports person, I'd play loads and loads of football and when I dislocated my shoulder, um, I was kind of like out for eight months. I was in a sling for something ridiculous, like three months. Um, and during that time, I kind of just locked myself away. Um, I, I couldn't really go out because I, I was kind of like embarrassed of being in a sling. Um, and that's kind of when my anxiety started started triggering. I'd go through really bad patches where I wouldn't even want to get out of bed. Um, all my friends were going off and playing football. Um, and I, I couldn't do that, I couldn't exercise, I couldn't really have that sort of, that, that release where I'd, I'd let off any stress um, and it worked a, a difficult period. But if I'm honest, towards the end of high school, I never fully sort of experienced um, depression. Then I went off to uni, um, it was stressful, I had loads of deadlines coming in, I had loads of like, kind of like new responsibilities living away from home and um, that's when my anxiety started to increase um, and I started to experience um, a couple more kind of like stints of um, the characteristics of depression uh, and for anyone that's actually experienced that um, a feeling of not wanting to get out of bed in the morning um, it's it's horrible then I actually met my first girlfriend um, she took everything away um, I completely stopped experiencing all of these kind of these symptoms my anxiety completely stopped um, I want having um, these brief dark thoughts. I, I wanted to get out of bed in the morning. Um, I, I was just, I, I was feeling really good about everything. Looking back on it now, I probably should have told her that what I'd dealt with previously, um, may, maybe it would have helped with dealing with situations a little bit better. Um, but instead, because of the whole stigma about a man needs to kind of like not not share his emotions because it doesn't feel or it's not stereotyped as being the typical um, manly self. Um, I, I I didn't I kind of just hid all that um, and just pushed it to a side and just completely forgot about everything. So I was going through this relationship and if I'm honest, um, I kind of had thoughts in the back of my mind like what if these um, these kind of dark thoughts and these depressive feelings uh, start coming back. And I kind of highlighted that she got rid of all of these thoughts, um, and it it made me it made me scared of losing her because I thought if I lose her, then all these feelings are going to come back to me, um, and I kind of clung on to that. So it kind of made me make some really bad decisions in trying to do anything I can to to keep hold of her. Um, and looking back on it now, obviously I, I regret a lot of the things I did, and not not just being open and not not just speaking to her but again I think it was just out of pure just em embarrassment about a man not really being able to talk about his feelings. 
and then came kind of like the start of the bad patches so I I took up Jiu Jitsu, uh, absolutely loved it, it was kind of like a fresh sport for me, I'd been watching a lot of uh, a lot of UFC, I was training for a couple of months uh, and then I dislocated my shoulder again. I kind of went through exactly the same stint as what I'd experienced before but this time it was, it were a lot worse. Um, I went through an even darker patch. Um, again, I went through the same feeling of what's what's the point in getting out of bed. All my friends were going out and socialising. I was struggling to go out at all, whether that was um, do stuff with my girlfriend at the time um, or go out socialising with my friends. Um, so again, I kind of just locked myself away um, and tried dealing with it on my own. The thing is, when I'd locked myself away in my room, I'd also be listening to music that I'd never listened to before. So really depressing music, artists like um, Lincoln Park, um, Chester Bennington, um, just really depressing songs as it was. And obviously this was worrying my mum because these artists had committed suicide themselves. So they were, they were sending out these lyrics that they were depressed themselves and I would find myself relating to the lyrics even more. So again, I was just getting lost in my thoughts and which again just sent me into this downward spiral and just made everything 10 times worse. And then came the thing that was probably the hardest thing I've ever had to deal with in my life. My, uh, my dad, um, my dad passed away. Um, he was dealing with depression for a, a long time. Um, but he self-medicated with alcohol and anyone who knows anything about depression knows that alcohol uh, it might be kind of like a, a short-term cure for the night but it actually makes depression a lot worse um, and he actually he, he ended up committing suicide um, <clears throat> and it, it it left me shocked it left me I, I, I just had so many questions and obviously I, I was never going to get the answer to them. Um, I kind of had a rocky relationship with him the past couple of years before he died anyway. I didn't, I didn't really see him too much. And when he died I, I, I was left with a, a lot of regrets that I obviously didn't take advantage of seeing him when I could. Um, a lot of guilt blaming myself for a lot of the things um, and uh, af after that I kind of just locked myself away I think it must have been for a week for two weeks didn't speak to anyone I just didn't know how to deal with anything um, I ended up just massively bottling everything up I didn't want to I didn't want to speak to anyone I didn't I just I just didn't want anything to do with that outside life. I just wanted to hopefully wait and let everything pass over. <clears throat> With bottling things up, you're not getting anything off your chest. You're just storing all these kind of emotions. And if I'm honest, it, it backfired massively because it turned me in. It turned me into someone I want. It turned me into a really angry person. I were I were taking things out on other people. I were. <clears throat> Now not communicating properly with anyone, I, I, I was just massively keeping myself to myself um, and obviously when you're going through a relationship it's, it, it puts a lot of strain on that relationship, not just with my partner at the time but it puts a lot of strain on my friendships, um, on my relationship with my family. So from that I didn't learn to deal with it, um, I started self-medicating as in I was going out a lot. Um, I was actually put in going out before my relationship. I was self-medicating with alcohol, um, uh, and I was also self-medicating with with exercise. And I know a lot of you will say exercise is really good for for dealing with depression, um, but I took it to the next extreme. I was literally training for three, four hours a day. Um, just because when I went to the gym or when I was sparring or when I was training with boxing or jiu-jitsu I'd, I'd completely forget about everything and then as soon as I'd finished training everything had just everything had come back but I took it to the next level and that obviously impacted my relationship massively 
Um, I wasn't really talking to any of my friends because I was just constantly focusing on spending all my time training um, because at that time that was my happy place and that's what I thought was doing me good but it never actually really dealt with anything. A massive point of that is I actually ended up with me losing a lot of friends because I became this angry person. I was pushing a lot of people away. Um, I was pushing my friends away. I ended up uh, pushing my girlfriend at the time away. Um, and e even my family, I was having little bickers with my family. I know it was a hard time for everyone, but because I bottled everything up, um, and it just it just changed me into this really angry person, and it was just having repercussions on every single relationship that I had in my life. And then came what really pushed me into sort of this downward spiral. Um, I pushed my girlfriend so far away that we actually ended up breaking up. And when that happened, I was kind of in disbelief um, because I had all these kind of emotions hit me, as in um, everything to do with my dad suddenly hit me, everything to do with how many people I'd pushed away whilst I was going through this. It all just felt like a massive kind of like explosion which just all came so suddenly. And then came kind of the two or three month period where I was literally in one of the darkest places I've, I've ever been in my life where um, I, I wouldn't get out of bed. I'd just see that there was no point in it whatsoever. Um, I felt literally emotionless. I, I, I hadn't laughed for about two or three months. Um, I hadn't properly been happy. I'd go to like, I'd try push myself, go to social events. I'd be in a, a room full of 50, 60 people um, and I'd still feel like, you know what, I don't actually want to be here. Um, people were talking to me, um, asking if I was okay because um, they, they knew something was wrong um, and I just wasn't, I wasn't listening to them. I wasn't bothered about the conversation. I literally just wanted to push myself to actually get to that social event and then just get home just so I could say, you know what, I've, I've, I've been out, I've tried. I realised how bad it had actually got. I then tried reaching out to my ex-partner, um, but obviously I'd pushed her away so, so much that she didn't want um, anything to do with it. And if I'm honest, I don't, I, I don't blame her in the slightest. Um, I, I completely understand. But at the time, I just felt so hopeless and felt like I had absolutely no one. And then that feeling pushed me further downwards. And I started having these feelings that I was literally just worthless, that I didn't have a point. I, if I'm honest, I couldn't even see myself getting to my 23rd birthday. I wasn't planning anything like future events or future um, social events with my friends because I'd just kind of set up this wall just to take it a day at a time. I didn't, if I'm honest, I didn't even think I'd make it to my 23rd birthday. I knew how bad things were getting and the hardest part for me was the first step to actually seek help but I kind of realised look I'm, I'm not going to get any better if I don't get any help so I took the first step, um, I went to my GP, um, they diagnosed it with depression and they gave me some antidepressants. The weird thing with antidepressants is it actually makes it worse before it gets better. Um, a lot of the side effects are kind of like suicidal ideation, um, having dark thoughts come, especially sort of in the first one or two weeks of actually taking it, which kind of seems a contradiction to what you're trying to achieve when taking the antidepressants. So I started taking the antidepressants and it just made things 10 times worse. Um, I, I ended up ringing sick into work, just because I, I didn't want to get out of bed. Think, things had gotten so bad that um, I was just spending the full day in bed, not talking to anyone, uh, not not wanting to be involved in anyone. Um, I was leaving all my group chats, I wasn't replying to any of my friends. And that was a point when the these dark thoughts and the suicidal thoughts got to an all-time high. Um, I remember being laid on my bed in my room and I was literally having a battle in my own head about planning this, this suicide attempt and it must have been going on for about 45 minutes to an hour and then finally something clicked in my head and I was just like, like 
what am I actually doing? So I went downstairs and spoke to my mum about it and I was I was literally in a mad panic because I was, I was like, I was actually going to go through with this. And so we kind of spoke about that. I felt like I dealt with that at the time. Um, and then a couple of days later, that was when that exact same plan or suicide attempt actually, actually happened. Um, a couple of days later, I was in the shower and I don't know what triggered it, but I just had a complete kind of breakdown. So I self-medicated by myself with alcohol and set out to do it. And that was kind of the first suicide attempt. And it was a ridiculously, like looking back on it now, it, it was absolutely ridiculous of me. But at the time, it, it seemed like the only answer and it seemed like the only solution. I didn't feel like I had anything left to give. So that, that attempt failed and I ended up in hospital and ended up having to stay in hospital overnight to get stitched up. Um, I, I just remember being in my hospital bed um, and my family came to see me, just asking me loads of questions like, what, why would you think of that? Why would you think about doing that? Um, and my uncle um, tried to hit home um, and he was just asking like, look, look, up, look up the marks on your body, like what? Like, why, why would you do that? And what, what, what do you think when you look at the marks on your body? And my response was literally, um, I, my response was literally, I just wish I'd have been successful with it. <clears throat> so I got patched up and I went home um, and everything were okay for like two, two days, three days. Um, and then that, that was when a more serious attempt happened. Um, I had another breakdown, it was literally like one o'clock in the morning. Um, and again, I, I set out for this suicide attempt. This one were, this one were a lot more serious. Um, and still to this day, I couldn't tell you how I actually survived it. I remember checking the CCTV, but the CCTV for kind of like a three day period for some reason wasn't wasn't clear so I, I couldn't see anything and again that ended up with me being in, in hospital uh, and I had someone from first response come down and speak to me um, who were kind of like a like a suicide prevention uh, organization um, a really good kind of like platform to speak to people and because of kind of the two suicide attempts in in a matter of days um, we decided for my own safety it was best if I was put in in a hospital a little bit more long term so i ended up going to the psychiatric hospital for my own protection because things had gotten so bad um, and that was the weirdest experience i could i could ever describe to someone i was in a ward with people with schizophrenia people with other mental health disorders um, and i was literally like like what am i doing here i was this normal uni student, love playing sports, love going out with my friends and now I'm in a stereotypical kind of like mental hospital. I just, I, I couldn't understand how I'd gone from doing so well to now I'd been put in this, in this hospital. So the first couple of days were really, I was really sceptical of it all. Um, if I'm honest I was a little bit intimidated by how serious a lot of these people with illnesses actually had it and then came kind of like four days in and one of the patients with schizophrenia um, actually came up to me and he was shocked at some of the marks on my body and that just kind of really hit home that I, I do need to be in here I do need to get better um, when someone with a serious mental disorder or a mental health issue like schizophrenia is coming up to me and is shocked at some of my scars that I do, I need to get better. So overall I stayed in there for about two weeks and it, I can't tell you how massively it helped me just time off from everything just to, just to get my own thoughts back together, just to start thinking sanely again. Then when I came out, I started attending uh, counselling and that really helped just to get everything off my chest, speak about my dad, speak about everything that had happened previously. And I can't tell you how beneficial that actually was to my recovery. 
Obviously I'm not recovered fully now and I don't think you can ever fully recover from depression but everything that I'd kind of been through in that four or five month period just highlighted how strong I actually was to make it through. The experience changed me so much as a person. It's okay to talk about how you're feeling um, and it's not, it's not considered weak at all. I, if anything, it's considered incredibly strong to know that you're struggling and to seek out help. Obviously, I have a lot of regrets. Um, a lot of the things I've done, a lot of the people I've pushed away. Um, but I can only move forward from that now. I know deep down that that wasn't who, who I was. I know that I bottled a lot of things up. I know that I didn't deal with everything properly. But the people I do have in my life have been absolutely amazing throughout all of this. Um, I didn't actually realise how many people I had supporting me. When I were in hospital, I must have received 50, 60 messages from people. Some people who I hadn't even spoken to for six or seven years, just saying that they're always there for me. And that was an unbelievable feeling. Just to know that people are there for you, especially ones that you didn't think cared. And I know suicide is considered a very selfish option because it's not thinking about sort of the impact that it has on people who you're leaving behind. But at the time, that felt like my only option. It felt like I was completely worthless. It just felt like I had no purpose. And again, looking back on it, I don't know why I'd even have considered that. It, it seems ridiculous, especially with everything I've got going for me now. I had some amazing people support me whilst I was going through all of this. Alex, Tom, Jake, Gabs, Baldy, um, just messaging me every day, making sure I were okay, coming to visit me more or less every day whilst I'm in hospital. Um, and if, if I'm honest, without you guys, and obviously without my mum, who's probably been the strongest person that I've ever met throughout all of this, if it wasn't for you guys, then I wouldn't be here today. And that's literally how serious this got. The main aim of this video really is just to tell you that you're not alone going through this. And if me sharing my story helps someone else potentially reach out and get help, then it's done its job. I had some unbelievable people supporting me throughout this whole process. And there's a lot of people out there who don't have the same kind of support that I have, who are going through this alone. And if I didn't have that support off my friends, off my family, off people who I'd not spoken to in so long, then the scary truth is I wouldn't be here today. So just remember, if you're dealing with depression or you're having these dark thoughts or you're just really struggling, then do seek help. Do reach out to someone. Cheers. So grateful for all the help and support I've received through this whole process and I'm incredibly excited for the future. I've set up my own personal training business, I've got a YouTube channel to run and just so many more unbelievable things to experience in life. But the main thing to remember is whatever you're going through in life, you're not alone.